Hey, I'm Paul with BPro, and welcome to Campaign Spelunky! So in today's episode, we're actually only going to cover two different campaigns because they're, they're, they're talking about marketing and sales and how it all plays together, and they're a little bigger, so that's why we're only going to go ahead and do two today. So first one we're going to go ahead and start with is uh, this guy over here, campaign number 68. Now if we zoom out on this, you can see that it's, it's a pretty, it's a monster, but that's because we are doing marketing stuff. There's all this sales stuff in the middle, which we'll look at, and then there's the actual fulfillment after the sale has been made. Um, so actually, let's go ahead and start and work our way backwards in this case, because uh, cryo gun. I don't even remember what that was. Um, knowing that there's also a DJ video series uh, listed here, um, perhaps it's some kind of a device for DJs or venues or even resellers here. Okay, so um, the point is once somebody buys a cryo gun then there's some general post-purchase stuff and again we're, we're not going to see anything in any series in any sequences at least for this this season once we get to the other uh, later episodes and future seasons it'll be a lot more fun. But the idea here is I guess we were going to go ahead and collect referrals. Uh, from these people and we see this same kind of hot mechanism where they they click to tell us I guess that they were happy and then we say go take a referral and then after that they would verify this particular referral now in this case um, we definitely can't have other people give their friends email addresses and then we just start emailing their friends that's that's definitely breaking the law so the way that this works is usually we're collecting like a phone number um, or if we are doing an email for some reason, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, it's still a manual thing. It's, it can't be automated. We can't just be sending automated emails to folks. But this is a really cool mechanism as well. And as we saw in the last episode, this line is, is technically redundant. We don't need it here uh, because this goal is further upstream. So to clean up this model, if we were to actually launch this, we can, we can go ahead and get rid of this. Okay, so that's the fulfillment part after the sale. Let's talk about the sales uh, that leads up to the marketing here. So looking at the way this structure works, we can see that basically there's some call at some point and then an outbound call to close this person. Now, depending on how much this cryo gun thing was, we may want to actually use a sales pipeline, but it's totally okay to do a bunch of marketing and then just have people raise their hand and say, hey, I'm interested in buying it. Uh, because we're also clicking to the sales page, as you can see here, in order to buy the cryo gun. Now we are seeing some redundant lines in here. So just to clean this up real quick, um, again, we don't need this line down here because reseller promo flows through here. So we can actually get rid of this guy, this guy, and then this one itself is also uh, redundant because if they are in the long term and they do a call request, this would go ahead and pull them out. There is also uh, likely a, another redundant line here, but it was hidden because it was lying on top of this. So I could, in theory, get rid of this. And so now it's a little easier to understand because pretty much regardless of what segment someone's in, once they click to the sales page, if they don't buy a cryo gun, we're going to go ahead and say, hey, they're hot. Uh, go ahead and buy it. And then if not, then they would, uh, uh, they can request a call. So it, since we're cleaning up lines here, this is what the optimized piece would look like. And so you can see it's more of a straight through line now um, compared to what it was. So what's interesting here is we do have a tag as a long-term nurture, so I guess at any point in time somebody can be tagged uh, with this and it'll pop them into here. And the call to action in all of these is, hey, click here and request a call with us. And if they do, but they don't give us their info, then we'll put them into some kind of a hot, a hot call sequence here, which is, which is pretty interesting. Um, so looking at these over here. So it looks like there is going to be a white paper and people can receive it, or they can also be tagged as a DJ, which is which is interesting. Um, likely, 
you do not need two sequences for that. Um, but we might, depending on, if anything, the messaging would probably be a little bit different here. Um, so based on if they say, you know, segment one or whatever, um, they go into one of these two, which is giving them the white paper, a very common structure we've seen. But the other thing that's interesting, too, is that at the end of this sequence, even if they never download the white paper, if they don't make it to this download PDF, they're still continuing on, which it's maybe a little easier to, to view it like this. So they get the white paper. If they never download the PDF, then they would proceed, and now they'll be put in uh, you know, possibly multiple uh, follow-ups. But given the way this works, I would probably say the white paper would get delivered, and then either they go into this event venue one, or they would go to reseller. Um, I mean, maybe they would go into the DJ promo one, um, but in theory, if they were tagged as a DJ here, they, they would never end up in here. So, again, these are older models. This is stuff that, uh, you know, I built way before I was super awesome at building uh, structures that produce this so myself. Um, but we can see the general idea, again, there's this, this through line in the middle where somebody who pressed the white paper, hopefully they download it. If they do download it, then there's the same, you know, following up with them to try and get them to, to go. And if they never download it, then they, they'll they still end up in this promotional sequence. Uh, I guess they're going to do some classified ads and have some foreign capture. Okay. Uh, some specific FAQs. So this is interesting. So using a note template, it's almost like a big red automation button. So yeah, I'll go ahead and send uh, this specific FAQ. So my guess is this was probably an example. Uh, and there would just be, you know, FAQ pricing, FAQ manufacturing, you know, whatever, this this kind of stuff here. And then looks like they would dump their existing list into some kind of a referral promo, which we're not sure where this points here. But you can see this is how we go through basically kind of the whole marketing and sales piece of it. Now, of course, there is some more marketing further upstream uh, to get people to request the white paper. But once we have that, we're following up with them. And... Uh, that's how that would look, and to restore the original state of the cave, again, leave leave nothing but footprints, just like real camping. I'm going to revert these changes to keep these, uh, you know, redundant and extra connections here. And if I ever, I don't think I made need to move this over. Okay, so this is looking at uh, the marketing sales and even a little bit of the fulfillment here. So let's go ahead and look at another marketing and sales campaign. This is. Uh, my buddy Caesar, and he's actually one of the guys that uh, I remember we worked with for quite some time. So if you're watching this, Caesar, what's going on? Um, he has a similar thing where there's a request, uh, people watch it, then there's a direct promotion for it to go by. Now we can see there isn't any fulfillment automation on here. Usually that's where I do a natural break in the automations anyway, where the purchase is kind of the you know end of the yellow brick road. And then there would be some other campaign that starts as a result of this purchase. It's a very natural switching point in the customer journey. But we're seeing these structures that we've seen before. So, for example, uh, once somebody's made it to this direct IYF promotion, which I don't remember what that would stand for, uh, we're trying to get them to view the sales page. And then if they do, but they don't check out, then uh, there's a hot version of it. And again, we're seeing this redundant line that we could get rid of. Uh, but no need to beat a dead horse here. And then we also, we actually almost have the exact same structure of uh, here's a thing, go click, and then we follow up after that. So there's there's going to be some kind of webinar request, likely with um, probably some other tool, if I remember. He was, a, he, was, he was using something for webinars. But basically, they dropped in for the webinar. They'd get whatever the sequence is. Again, these aren't modeled out because these were concepts back in the day. Um, but you can imagine what that would look like counting down to it. And then eventually they would watch the replay. And thanks for watching. You get the direct promotion. Of course, if people are on the webinar and then they straight up just go buy the thing, then they get sucked out to this entire point. So that was the idea of using a webinar for kind of the marketing and then also the sales of this this program, or at least getting people into this direct promotion of it, kind of warming them up a little bit. And then there's another mechanism for two free videos. So this is very interesting here. 
Um, same kind of idea where uh, now these lines are not redundant. We'll talk about that in a moment. But basically, somebody says, give me these two videos. We deliver it to them, and then hopefully they watch it. Um, for some reason, we were tagging that they watched this video. Um, if I wetted those stats today, uh, I would just use the link click goal. And this would just be kind of like a, a pass through. So if they, so let's say video delivery has like three emails in it, you know, video one, reminder, and then like a final reminder here. I would have click to watch, pull them out as soon as they watch any of them, and then that would just probably put them into video two directly. Um, we could probably get rid of this entire sequence uh, overall and just have this point directly to here. Now, this isn't redundant because. If somebody makes it all the way through video one delivery, uh, just like we talked about in the last uh, in the last episode, if it's going from sequence to sequence, what this means, you know, without a goal in the middle, this means that this whole entire sequence runs, and then they would go into here. So even if they never click to watch, we're still going to make good on the two videos that they were promised. Uh, and then we have the same structure here, where if they click to watch, we would tag them, uh, and then they would just go into the direct promotion as well. I would. Uh, again, if I was doing this today, I probably wouldn't have this tag to watch. If anything, maybe I would tag the links in the email if I really wanted that. But I don't even think that was available uh, back in the day in like 2012 when we were doing this. So, uh, and then the same thing, if somebody makes it all the way through video 2, doesn't download it, they'll, doesn't watch it, they'll still get popped into this direct promotion here. Now, um, this is redundant, again, because if I were to for example, get rid of this, it's still going to function the same way. If somebody hits the purchase, because there's a through line, it's going to go ahead and pull them through. So let's go ahead and revert all of those changes here. And that brings us to the end of this particular episode where we were talking about how to do a more involved marketing and sales customer journey here. So let me know what you thought about it. And if you have any questions, please let us know in the comments. Be sure to follow us and subscribe and like it. And if you're going to do anything, you might as well be pro. See you next time.